This week on the internet, the series we're going to talk about the topics of during the week. And first up, we have Disney getting hacked. And it's kind of a big deal. Disney has lost one tebibyte of data, which is basically a terabyte. Don't ask why they said tebibyte. I don't know either. Anyways, they basically stole everything. And I'm not exaggerating. Unreleased projects, internal messages, all employee information, basically everything. The group that reportedly hacked Disney is called Null Bulge. Yep, that's their actual name. They claim to be a hacktivist group protecting artists' rights and ensuring fair compensation for their work. So you probably don't need to worry about this. But the guy who initially help get them in got doxxed by them because he got cold feet so yeah this is pretty serious and that guy does work for disney he is a walt disney employee so this is probably real and i'm sorry i'm not gonna download the data to confirm i don't know what's in those files and i also don't want disney knocking on my door okay but i imagine stuff like this is gonna keep happening because these companies do not have good security as we've seen pretty much every company on earth is getting hacked more and more and more and none of them have proper security and if people at these companies keep getting fed up with the companies they're gonna keep letting hackers in so we'll see what happens with all this but it is not a good day to be Disney. And next up, we have an AT&T hack. And this one really is bad for you if you have AT&T, because hackers downloaded pretty much everything about their customers. Their phone numbers, their call records, their text records, pretty much everything they have on record. There was a backdoor exploit in a cloud server that AT&T used or had, and that's how they got in and downloaded all the data. Now, if you have AT&T, I would strongly encourage you to maybe look elsewhere if you can, because this is a crazy hack. It is literally everything. And I mean, none of these companies are good. Verizon sucks, T-Mobile sucks, Xfinity sucks. They all suck. But if a company loses pretty much all the data they're supposed to, you know, keep sacred, you should probably just leave if you can. I know that in some areas, AT&T is just like the only real option you have. So I am sorry about that if you live in those areas, it sucks. But yeah, if you can switch, I recommend it because this is ridiculous. Also, if you're worried about your phone number not transferring, you can usually just do that now. I don't know if that's like a concern people still have or not. Also, please subscribe down below. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm trying to hit 500k subs. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. And next up, we have Riot Games canceling their Smash Bros. like fighting game. Now, there's not much to this besides them canceling it. Its codename was Pool Party, and it would have been a platform fighter set in the League universe. And the reason they canceled it was because Multiverses was a really big failure. And I will say on that front, that's kind of a dumb reason to cancel it because Multiverses like dug their own grave. The problem with Multiverses was they released the game and then unreleased the game and then released it a year later. That was the problem with Multiverses. You can't officially release a game and then recall it and then give it back a year later. That's not gonna, that's not gonna pan out well. So that's kind of a silly reason to cancel it. But at the same time, I don't know how well it would have done. I really don't see that kind of game getting picked up like that. Because whenever people play Smash Bros, at least in my experience, most people don't do it competitively. And I feel like most people wouldn't get into it competitively. So I don't know how well it would work long term. But it's still interesting that they were thinking about it. And next up, we have the Starlink Mini. And this thing is actually pretty cool. Now, I don't like Elon Musk. I think that's pretty apparent by my videos. But I am not going to discount Starlink. Because he barely touches SpaceX, okay? He is not a rocket engineer in the slightest. And honestly, the more hands-off he is, the better the product is. Anyways, the Starlink Mini is now a thing, and it costs $50 a month, which is actually pretty decent. But it is a 50 gig data cap, which you can pay to increase in the mobile app. Now, I usually do hate data caps, and I still don't like this data cap, but this also makes a lot more sense than a lot of data caps, because a lot of data caps just don't need to exist anymore. Xfinity, AT&T, all these companies have fiber lines, and they don't really need data caps to limit your data usage, so you use less. They just don't. But in the case of Starlink. It is a bunch of low orbit satellites and there's only so many of those. So having a data cap to limit bandwidth is actually a pretty good thing because if there was no data cap, people would definitely abuse it and it would really slow down the service because there's not that many satellites so the bandwidth is not that great at the moment. But the Starlink Mini is cool because it's meant to go like anywhere and this will definitely be very useful for a lot of different people. There is a huge demand for this kind of solution and it has not existed yet because actual satellite internet sucks and cell towers also suck and low orbit satellite internet generally works better. Now, there's a lot of questions of whether we should even have them in low orbit because they're kind of basically space debris at this point, and we have too much of that, but we'll deal with that when we can't launch satellites into space anymore. And next up, a whistleblower at Tesla has revealed that Tesla was rigging the self-driving to work in favor of Elon Musk and content creators. And I never assumed they were doing this, but hearing that it's happening doesn't surprise me at all. It makes a lot of sense, actually. If you've ever watched a full self-driving video on YouTube and then experienced full self-driving, the difference is night and day. When the content creators do it, it's actually pretty good. If you do it, it'll have a lot of problems. But basically how they do this is they would they would check content creators' routes and then Elon Musk would have the engineers make sure their route performed better, which is a problem. Because that means anyone who saw a full self-driving video didn't get the actual experience shown to them. Now, I want to be totally clear. This is not the creator's fault at all. They would have no idea 
idea this was happening because all the creators that i know of that do full self-driving content they bought the car themselves and they bought full self-driving themselves they're just enthusiasts they would have no reason to assume this was happening at all so yeah content creators did not know there was no backroom deal to make this happen they just didn't know that they were doing this and at this point in time if it's not obvious full self-driving with only cameras will not be possible within like the next 10 years it's not gonna happen there's a reason the waymo cars have like 12 different sensors on them and they look ridiculous it's because they need those sensors full self-driving just will not work with only cameras there's too many variables and if you want more proof full self-driving was supposed to come out like six years ago at this point and elon musk said the robo taxis were gonna be announced like this month or something and then he delayed it so i don't think this thing exists guys and in my experience with teslas back when they came out the features were pretty good like they were better than their competition but nowadays the competition has caught up and it's better like most of the automatic features are worse than other brands i would say realistically on terms of like auto wipers and cruise control and all that stuff tesla's like in the middle of the rankings they're not the absolute worst but they're not great either so yeah hearing that the full self-driving was rigged for creators really just did make a lot of sense because i did wonder why their roots were so good and next up the vision pro is now available in the uk and europe i don't know who's buying this if i'm being perfectly honest four people might be and if you are in europe and you want to buy this you now can if you're one of the four people so have fun i guess and next up we have a funny article i saw called this is what humans will look like in the year 3000 and we've seen this exact thing before it's funny that it just keeps repeating and next up youtube shorts has added a tiktok style artificial voiceover so an ai voiceover and youtube is also adding auto captions to shorts which i think is really good captioning is one of those things that no one should have to do you know what you said in the video you recorded it all you do is type things on the screen and put text on the screen and give it effects and stuff it's tedious it's ho it's horrible if you've ever hit to subtitle or caption a video you agree with me it's terrible the ai voice thing i don't know how i feel about it the tiktok one just kind of annoys me whenever i hear it so i'm assuming youtube's will give me the same thing but we'll see and next up we have an open ai insider who left the company who says that the company is like the titanic and it's a sinking ship and they think that they're hunky dory but they're really not so basically his whole thing was they're releasing updates too quickly they're not testing anything there's probably a huge security vulnerability somewhere in chat gpt that's basically what he said and this company culture just kind of holds up because we've already had really simple issues come from OpenAI just being lazy like remember how they were storing all of chat gpt stuff on the mac in plain text with no encryption at all like clearly they're not taking things super seriously and i also want to point out that chat gpt has not really improved ever since three like four is slightly better but not really and i really don't see it getting much better because guys they literally trained it on all of the data on the internet like pretty much everything it ran out of content to train on and if you feed an ai its own content it turns into this gibberish you can't feed it its own data i don't know the specifics but i do know that it does cause issues and also at the same time as all of this companies are starting to realize that this stuff has no utility at all and just cost a lot of money to operate every time you ask ChatGPT a stupid little question depending on the length obviously that varies it it costs an average of like 36 cents to answer your question and that's what they discounted power rate from power companies because you're using such a large-scale operation i would assume it's just not sustainable and there is no real utility it can't sift through information because if you ask it questions it will lie to you and the thing that i thought it was gonna be good at which was finding articles from the unbrowsable google now it can't do it sucks at it the one thing i wanted to be able to do it can't do so yeah i agree open ai is the titanic and it's going to sink and have a catastrophic failure that's been the weekly recap thank you for watching please subscribe if you're new like the video down below and comment as well and click the answer down check out more of my content and have a good one